pray that you would anoint every teacher, Lord. Use them as a vessel, Lord, a, a vessel of honor, O oh God, for your highest purpose and calling this morning. Lord, anoint their lips, Lord, to speak the word that you want them to speak. Lord, that will penetrate the hearts of every student. Lord, we pray that your will would be done. Lord, we trust you with all of our heart. We try not to lean to our own understanding, but we need to learn to, Lord, totally lean on you and stop relying on our own knowledge. Lord, we love you today. We trust you today. We, we magnify your holy, glorious name, and we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, today we have a special uh, teacher for the adult class. Amen. He has been with us for a while, shown himself faithful, uh, devoted, comes to Bible study, uh, studies the Word of God, prays, seeking approval from God. And uh, I am glad to introduce to you today uh, a gentleman who has taught two youth classes now under his belt. Now he's going to teach the adults. Amen. That's Brother Chris Lynn. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on up, brother. Amen. And I'm going to get out of his way so he don't have to be nervous. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Would you give him your total attention and receive the Word of God? I know he's put a lot into it. He's prayed about it, and he's going to use God's Word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What an opportunity to be here with you folks today. Um, you know, the pulpit is not something that I, I take lightly. It doesn't matter what you're up here doing. Um, it's, it's an honor to be able to speak to the people of God. Um, it's an honor to share a message from God, um, to teach a lesson. Um, we don't know the time or the hour. <laughs> we don't know the time or the hour. So every message that we hear, every message that we're able to teach, every message, anytime we're able to speak to the people of God, it's a true honor and it's, um, it's a privilege. And we have to take it with um, a complete reverence to God. Um, I'm glad I made it this far. I thought I might trip on the way up here, but <laughs> I can check that box off that I, I made it. <laughs> I made it one step, so um, the Lord's going to have to take over the rest. Praise God. Um, today's lesson, we're going to be reading from the book of Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Um, we're going to be reading from Luke 15. And we're going to be looking at the parable of the lost sheep. Praise God. Parable of the lost sheep. So um, before we even get into that, I want to take a look at who Jesus is speaking to in this um, in this parable. So first off, um, Luke 1, Luke, uh, I'm sorry, Luke 15, verse 1, tells us of a few types of people that were, that were there. Um, Brother Trovis, if you could help me, um, would you read Luke 15, verse 1 and 2? Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. All right. So here we have Jesus. Um, we've got a gathering of people here to hear Jesus' teachings. Um, who do we have here? We've got tax collectors or publicans. We've got sinners, scribes, Pharisees. And um, we all know that when the Pharisees are on site, it's going to be a whole lot of arm folding. It's going to be a whole lot of eye rolling. It's going to be a whole lot of um, 
Judgment. Absolutely. Absolutely. So as we can see, this um, this various um, this gathering of various different people, um, they all came to hear Jesus's teaching. So we're going to have different people from different backgrounds, um, people with different knowledge levels, um, different occupations, um, different worldviews. Um, there's going to be people there of different ages, children um, there. Um, and then we have believers and sinners as well. Um, and with all the skepticism and all the murmurings and all the wonder that surrounded Jesus, um, we can assume that people also came for di various reasons. Um, you're going to have those people that are there to actually receive a word. Um, we're going to have people there that came to just kind of see what all the hype was about. Um, we're going to have people there who come to actually just validate and confirm their skepticism of Jesus. And we know there's there's always a percentage of people that were there because mom, dad, husband, wife dragged them there. And that that's, you know, that's been all of us. So <laughs> um and if we're being honest, you know, that's not much different than why people attend a church service today. Um times change, but people don't change that often. People don't change that much. Um, and you know what? It's quite all right. If you came because somebody dragged you here, if you came, if, if you came because you wanted to see what all the hype was about, if you came because you wanted to, um, validate your skepticism or you wanted to, you know, judge, Hey, you're here. We want you to come. We want you to be here. So come with your questions, come with your doubts, come with your uncertainties. Come with your past hurts. Come with it all. Um, the church is a place of healing. We want to love people back to life. We want to love people back to health. We want to love people into a relationship with the almighty God. Um, a lot of people have been hurt. Unfortunately, yes, in the church. People have been hurt. People hear things. They take an idea that they heard or they see, you know, that one preacher, that one pastor that that violated people, that one pastor that took advantage of the congregation. They see that and they take that idea and they run away with it. And a lot of times they'll never come into the um, come into the house of God. Um, you know, when. When people, when people decide to come into the church, um, we've got to welcome people with open arms. Um, you know, in this parable, it talks about lost sheep. But when we're really looking at it and we're thinking about it, we all were lost. Before coming to the, the revelation of Christ, become, before coming to the revelation of his truth, we all were lost. We are all lost sheep, um, whether you're coming in for the first time or whether you, it, you left and um, you're coming back. So in verse two, we can learn from this example of Jesus where it shows us that the scribes and the Pharisees, they complain that Jesus received sinners and ate with them. I want it to be said of us as a people. I want it to be said of us as as apostolics that. We received sinners. We didn't, we didn't, we shouldn't be turning sinners away. We shouldn't be judging them. We shouldn't be, you know, making them conform to every single, um, every single outward standard when they're first coming into the church. We need them here because once they're here, then we have to trust the spirit. You know, sometimes I wonder how much we do truly trust the spirit of God? How much do we really um, depend on and believe in the power of God? Um, you know, I've been, I've been in some places where I've seen this even at an altar where newcomers come in and you have, you know, you might have someone that wants to pray with them and 
they're not really praying for them. They're preaching to them at the altar. They're telling them what they need to take off, what they need to put on, what needs to be longer, what needs to be shorter, what needs to be cut, what needs to be shaved, what needs to be And there's nothing that kills a soul faster than doing that. They've already been drawn. They've been drawn to the altar. They've trusted us. We made an altar call. They've trusted us to come to the altar. They're coming to the altar to be loved on. They're coming in with pain. They're coming in with hurt. They're coming in with baggage. They're coming in with ideas, um, false ideas, some bad ideas that might actually be true because of what other people have done and what other people have said, you know, said to them. And um, we need to have a spirit of reception instead of rejection. Um, that goes for people who are coming into the church for the first time. That goes for people who are coming back to God. You know, and... Um, People leave the church for all types of reasons. It's not up to us to judge why they left. It's not up to us to condemn them for the choices that they've made. Because if we're all sitting here and we're all saying that we've never made a mistake and that we've never made poor choices, um, we, we deceive ourselves is all I have to say. We deceive ourselves. Luke 15, 3 three through four. And he spake this parable unto them. So we know who he's speaking to now. Speaking to people from different backgrounds, different levels, um, different people from different, um, who are there for different reasons. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. With this parable, Jesus is challenging their mindset. Um, he asked them this thought-provoking question in hopes that they would see the value in a single sheep. He wants them to value a lost sheep the way that he values a lost sheep. And like I said, you know, many of us, we were that lost sheep. Um, and prior to getting the revelation of Christ, we all were lost, whether we had been in church or not. Um, we're lost until the good shepherd found us. And personally, you know, I, I thank God that he didn't think of me and say, well, you know, that that sheep right there, he's got he's got too many scars. He's got too many issues um, to deal with, um, you know, and, and quite frankly, you know, what? He, he got lost because of his bad attitude. He got lost on his own. He chose to be lost. You know, um, I thank God that he didn't look at me and say, you know what? He's probably going to stray again. So what's the point? You know, why, why, why call him back in if he's going to go out again? Why call him, why call him back in if, he, he, if he's going to be partying and he's going to drink and he's going to be cussing and he's going to be doing X, Y, and Z under the sun? you know, within 36 hours. Why touch, why bring him back in? And, you know, I thank God that he didn't look at me that way. This is not how God decides who he seeks out. You know, many times these are, even these things that I've mentioned, these are things that not only other people will say to us, but these are things that we think to ourselves. You know, you may have lost sheep in your family, and I can, I would say with certainty, certainty that most people in here have lost sheep in their family. You may have lost sheep at work, friends, somebody. We all know lost sheep. And they, they at times can struggle with these thoughts. Because I know when I was that lost sheep, I struggled with a lot of these thoughts. You know, why come back? You know, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Why, why, why should I go to church today if I know... I'm going to be partying with my cousins, you know, on Thursday night. Why, why, why spend that time in church when I know I'm going to go back? Why, um, why start reading my Bible if I know I can't sustain it? You know, why come back if I know people 
are going to be thinking that, oh, he'll be he'll be back. He'll be back in the world. And, you know, he's just this is just another little uh, Jesus binge that he's on another little Jesus trip that that he's on. Um, so these are the things that we have to consider that, you know, sheep might be thinking they might have these things going on through their minds. So when we're receiving them. It's not our it's not our responsibility to question or to judge. It's our responsibility to open up our arms and it's our responsibility to receive them. And, you know, I'm I'm glad that. My pedigree had nothing to do with whether or not the good shepherd came and found me. I'm 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 really glad that my family history had nothing to do with it. My ethnicity had nothing to do with it. My political positioning didn't have anything to do with it. My bank account had nothing to do with it. <laughs> I thank God. <laughs> I thank God that none of these things had anything to do with whether Jesus came looking for me. I thank God that he came for me regardless, regardless of my mindset at the time, regardless of, of my past and what I've done and what I've got involved with, he still came looking for me. He still came looking for you. And I thank God for that. I thank God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Many of you know. Many of you know I have two children and um, many of you have children as well. Um, and if God forbid. God forbid my children were to one of my children were to get separated from me in public in a mall or or something like that. Um, I can tell you there is nothing. There is nothing. <laughs> there is nothing that I would not do. There's no one that would be able to stop me from searching for my child. Nothing at all. And, you know, even the thought of that, even just the thought of being separated from your child is anxiety provoking. Um, I would search high and low. You would search high and low. We would utilize every resource possible to bring our child home. If we're in a public space, we're going to we're going to call on security. We may ask citizens to help us look for our child. We may give description. We may um, use a, a, a PA system um, to try to call our child back. But we're going to do whatever we can in order to make sure that our child is reunited with us. And, you know, this is how Jesus cares. And this is about every soul, whether they left the sheepfold or if they've never been part of the sheepfold. He searches and he seeks out lost souls. Luke 19, 10 tells us, for the Son of Man is come to seek, to seek and to save that which is lost. That's the whole purpose. That's his whole purpose. Jesus was always seeking lost souls. His, 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 his senses or his sensitivity for lost souls was always turned on. That frequency to, to see lost souls um, and to discern lost souls was always turned up. Um, he, wasn't, he wasn't drunk off of what was happening in the world. He wasn't drunk off the entertainment. He was His purpose, he was single-mindedly focused on finding souls um, and bringing lost souls. Um, he brought them through teaching. He brought them through the working of miracles. Jesus never healed a lame man and said, now you got your dancing legs on, you know, go party it up, go live it up. That was never the purpose. That, the purpose was never to, to heal people so they can go back to the lifestyle that they lived. It was never to, it was never so that they can just get a, this new lease on life and then forget about him. He was always seeking to save us. Whatever he did was done out of a heart of compassion and he was looking to save us. Praise God. I know of a particular woman who was at a well in Samaria. And Jesus came looking for her. He was always looking. This woman had a sketchy past. 
<laughs> this woman had done some unsavory things. She may have had many things to be ashamed of. And here comes Jesus, the good shepherd. Now, Jews would have normally avoided Samaria. They normally would have, mm, you know, when you try to go to certain places, you're like, ah, oh, you know what, I'll take the long way. <laughs> I'll take the long ride around, you know, let's, let's stick to the surface streets. But Jesus went straight down the middle. He went straight through the muck of it all. He went what people consider to be the muck. He went straight through Samaria. He didn't do this by accident. He didn't get lost. He had a mission, and his mission was to seek and to save. And as we know, this woman, is, um, this woman at the well, we know of her past. Jesus told her of her past. And like we mentioned before, lost sheep can have a certain narrative in their mind about being lost, about why they're lost, and about being found. This woman probably felt that she was too far gone off the beaten path. She probably thought that she probably felt millions and millions of miles away from the sheepfold. Or maybe even millions and millions of miles away from anybody who cared about her. In John 4, when Jesus finds this spiritually lost woman, first thing he does, it shows her that she has value. How does he do this? He says, give me a drink. This is a Jewish man asking a Samaritan woman for a drink. Why would you do that? You are, and, and even by her response, she says that, what are you as a, as a Jewish man asking me for a drink? Jesus is showing her you're worthy. You have worth. You have value. You are worthy to give me a drink. This is, this, this is how Jesus is receiving her. This is the opening to uh, the, the revelation of who he is. It goes on and he offers her. See, Jesus was always, Jesus is a solution based. He, 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 he's, he's a savior and he was always a savior from the beginning. The plan was that he would be a savior. So his m mission and his mindset was always to save. What he offers her is living water. He offers her something that he hopes will keep her in the fold. He offers her a resource. He offers her something that she can draw from continually so that she doesn't stray away, so that he, she doesn't get away from the fold again. And that's what Jesus always wants. He doesn't, Jesus doesn't give us a quick fix. He doesn't give, give us, you know, two cc's of hope and then, tap us on the backside and say, you know, I'll see you soon. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't handle us like that. He wants to give us something that's going to sustain us, something that's going to keep us, something that's going to, that's going to keep us coming back. Praise God. Praise God. And you know, the, the, the interesting part to me, which that, that Jesus displayed, which is completely unlike our human nature, is that if this is us, and, and, and just going back to the example of, God forbid, being separated from your child somewhere, um, you know, if that happened to us, when we did find our child, we would be happy, we would be relieved um, to have found our child. However, I think, and I'm not the perfect parent, <laughs> we would have a lot of questions, especially, you know... It, in my mind, I'm imagining this is a situation where, Victoria, I told you over and over and over again. This is a situation where you've told your child, stay with me, stay next to me, stay close, don't wander off, stop hiding in the clothes rack, don't leave the store without me, over and over and over again. These are things that we, and we know they love the clothes rack. And um, we would ask questions. 
once we embraced them and we were and we were relieved and that weight is off of us, why would you leave? What were you thinking? You know, haven't I told you so many times not to wander off? You know, and and this is this is literally us. I, it's the same thing. It's our relationship with Jesus. He tells us over and over through the preaching of the word, through the word. He speaks to us over and over and over again. He tries to keep us close. Don't you know? Keep your eyes off of that. Don't go. No, th that's my son. That's that's not going to help you. Come back in. That's not going to help you. Oh, that over there. That's that 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 smoke and mirrors. Don't you know? That's a pit right there. There's a pit right there. That's not going to help you at all. He tries to keep us. He tries to, to, to keep us close to the fold. Um, preachers tell us all the time, we don't, we don't forsake the assembling of ourselves. That's how sheep get lost. That's one, that's one way how sheep get lost. And she, I, I mean, we get lost for a lot of different reasons, but I can tell you it usually starts that way. Ah, you know what? I deserve a Sunday off. <laughs> uh, woke up with a little bit of a headache. I got some Tylenol to take, but you know what? Let me just rest in bed a little bit. Mm, just one Sunday. I came every other Sunday this month. Let me just take one. Let me just take one Sunday off. Let me take one Wednesday off. This is how. Slowly but surely. We just kind of wander. And the sheep is going there, and we just kind of wander, and we kind of wander. And when we look up, we see a place we don't recognize. We realize, where in the world is, where is the, re it's not where are they, it's where are we. Where are we? What is our positioning? Mm, praise God. Praise God. Jesus, he doesn't do this. He doesn't ask the Samaritan woman, why have you done this? Why did you do this? Why did you choose to do X, Y, and Z? He offers her support. He opens his arms wide to receive her. And this is always the MO of Jesus. He's welcoming. People ran towards Jesus. You can find people in the Bible running away from him. They may have doubted him. They may have not have thought that what he was saying was true, but they were never trying to escape him, and they were never trying to get away from him. They were always, even, even enemies ran to him. So they were always being drawn to Jesus, always being drawn to Jesus. And that's, I, I believe as Christians, I believe as, as apostolics, we should be desiring for people to run towards us. We should have that persona. We should have that, that spirit about us where people want to know what do we have. What, what is bro that brother right there got something different. You know, that sister right there, she's got something different. I wonder what that is. I'm a little bit skeptical about it, but I'm still curious. I still want to know what it is. Praise God. Praise God. I pray that mm, I pray that we would receive people not to shame them. Pray that we would receive people not to make them feel guilty for being lost. But our mission, the mission of Jesus Christ was always to save. I pray we would purpose it in our hearts to be a church, a people that would be seeking the loss and welcoming them back in or back into the, welcome them in or back into the fold with open arms. I pray that we would embrace them and hold them close and lead them to that same well that we were once led. We can't get too high-minded. We can't become too arrogant and forget that we were wandering and we were straying and we were, you know, stepping on thickets and we were you know out there lost um on our own um and we can't forget the reasons why let's 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 not act like let's not act like we had it all together and we only left because of someone else a lot of times it's our own decisions it's our it's our own fault i'll be the first to raise my hand i've i've been lost because because of my own fault, because of things that I things that I did not do. Praise God. 
And that's what this woman, this, that's what this woman did. This woman at the well, John 4, 28 through 30, once this woman's eyes are open, once this woman realizes that, once this woman realizes that who this man is, and she feels his forgiveness, it says she left her water pot. So <laughs> she left that temporary source that was supposed to quench her thirst, that, 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 that temporary one. She left that, and she went into the city and told others. She told others immediately, straight away she went and told others. She said, come and see a man which told me everything that I did. <laughs> he told me everything that I did. Is this not the Christ? Boom, light bulb moment. Revelation. Let us not be selfish with revelation because we once were in darkness and we were brought to light. Someone showed us the light and we received that revelation. Let us not hold on to it. Let us not let us not withhold from the spiritually needy these things. When she went out into the city, the people left. Once she told them about Jesus, they left the city and came on to him. So again, we see people running, people being drawn to Jesus. Let us not withhold from the spiritually needy. And 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 you know, like I said. Sheep, we get lost for, sheep get lost for different reasons. Um, sheep, they're fearful animals. Um, they wander because by nature they're followers. They get distracted. They see something off this way, and they kind of just, you know, they kind of just mosey on over. Um, even a physical sheep, their eyes are situated on the sides of their heads. So their vision is different. Their vision is here. That's why you see horses, they put that, those blinders on. That's what we've got to have. We've got to have blinders so we can walk straight, so we can stay straight. But sheep, just like us a lot of times, we get, oh, what's that? Hmm. What's that? Y'all still there? Oh, what's that? What's, what's that? And we stray. And we look up. And we don't realize where we are. Praise God. Mm. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God because I was so lost. I was oh so very lost. And many of us in here were oh so very lost as well. Mm. In closing, there, there's going to come a time, and there probably has been a time in our lives when we have been the lost one and also where we'll be part of the 99. The question is, where will you be when the lost ones come back? When the Lord begins to bring them back, when those prodigals begin to come back, when your cousins and your aunts and your uncles and your grandmothers those who have maybe gone away from the faith, those who are not yet in the faith, where will we be? Where will we as Christians, as followers of Christ, where will we be when they come back? Because they're coming back. It's, it's, it's happening right now. If you can't sense it in the spirit, it's happening right now. Lost sheep are being pulled back. Prodigals are coming home. They're on their way home. We've got to be consistent We've got to be faithful. We've got to be right here waiting for them with open arms. We've got to be, we've got to be able to receive them. I've got cousins. I got a whole lot of cousins, a whole lot of cousins. I got a whole lot of aunties. If anybody needs cousins or aunties, come see me after church. I got plenty of them. But I, for myself, I want to be here. I want to be as they say, ten toes down in this gospel, in this faith. I want to be strengthened every day so that when they come in, I can say, cuz, come. Let me show you what I've been learning. 
Let me let me let me let me let me show you something. Let me there's a well over here. There's a well over here. Hey, if you drink from this well, you'll never thirst again. You will never ever thirst again. That's where I want to be. I want to be here. I want to be ready to receive them. What will our relationship with the Almighty look like when they come home? We've got to be ready. We've got to be ready to receive them. We've got to be ready to teach them a better way. We've got to be ready to lead them in the right way. We've got to. God didn't call us. He didn't save us so that we could just be in a little corner, you know, saved by ourselves. And these are, these, these are typically, you know, people who, I don't really need a church to, I just need a relationship with God and that's it. And I'm going to just ride this thing out with just my own little personal relationship with God. That's not why he called us. He called us so that we can go out and pull and find. We're, we're supposed to now go out and find. Just as the woman at the well, she got the revelation. She went out and, and she was compelled by that revelation. She said, we ha I have to tell people. I've got people in my home that I have to tell. They need this. They need to know that this is the Christ. They need to know that I found the Christ. Praise God. Praise God. In closing number two. <laughs> oh, boy. Sometimes I thank God. Churches I grew up in. <laughs> uh, I knew I had 30 about 30, 35 U.S. minutes. So <laughs> I'm going to close this. I'm going to close this thing out. We, lo we all have been lost sheep. We all know lost sheep. Let our mission today, let our, our priorities today be to seek as well. When we're at work, when we're at, you know, we're, we're, we're at family reunions, wherever we may be, let our mission always be to be seeking, to be drawing. We don't want to be drawn by the world. We don't want to be influenced. We want to be the influence. No matter where, we don't, we don't have to turn a, a, a blind eye to things. We don't have to ignore people, condemn them. We don't have to be high and mighty in our minds. But we want to be welcoming. We want to be non-judgmental. We want to receive them. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And Pastor, I thank God for this opportunity. Pastor, I thank you for this opportunity. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God man. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give him a hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Good word. Good word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Awesome. 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 Let's stand together. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We exalt you. We magnify you, God. Lord, you are worthy of all our praise, O oh God. Lord Jesus, when we are lost, Lord, you come looking, O oh God. Lord, you're a merciful God. You love us, O oh God. Lord Jesus, let us learn to trust you, Lord, with all of our heart so that we don't wonder, that we don't get distracted, that we don't have to be found. Lord, let us stay in the flock, God, and let us show mercy to others. Lord, let us reach for the lost. Let us reach for those that have backslidden. Lord, use us as your vessels. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Why don't you greet somebody next to you? Amen. We got a few returning uh, members. Hallelujah. Good to have all of you back that were not feeling well last week. Amen. Good to have Sister Marcia back. Brother Chris came back last Sunday. Brother Mike, hallelujah. Amen. We continue to pray for those that are sick. Amen. And we know that God is in control and we want to save the sick. Hallelujah. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to worship, but greet one another and love one another. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Good to have Carla and Jose back from Puerto Rico. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. 
Amen. When you're done hugging one another and greeting one another, let's hug Jesus and let's greet Jesus and let's praise his holy name and lift up his name and praise that great name. Hallelujah. I am 
thank you, Jesus. I thank you, my Savior. I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. I just feel a spirit of freedom here this morning, this morning. A spirit of rejoicing. Lift up your head and rejoice. We've got nothing to hang our head and worry and shame and anxiety and stress. We should lift up our head. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because hell lost another one. Amen. We were bound for a, a hell, a devil's hell ground. We were dead, bound for the lake of fire. But he, Jesus stepped in. I don't know about you, but I was bound for a devil's hell. The choices that I had made, just being born a human. Amen. Jesus. You feel uh, thankful that he saved our souls, that he set us free. Amen. Amen. And if you are feeling bound this morning, it's not God's will. Could you turn to your neighbor and tell him it's not God's will that you feel bound this morning? Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish somebody would begin to rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up. Come on, saint. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out. Of. Why don't you go? Could you find a neighbor, a brother or a sister, please? Come on, sometimes we need somebody else to help us. Sometimes, Brother Romig, I've been so down that I couldn't see the way up, and I needed a sister to come beside me and take my hand and say, get up. I'm going to help you get up out of that grave. Come on, if you're able to. You got it. Yeah, come on. The Lord's fixing to get up. He's fixing to break it open. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. He picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the savior. Because he healed my heart. He changed my name. Forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I thank God, oh, I thank you, God, I thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, I thank you, Jesus, don't go back to your seats, Jesus, we're here to worship the Lord, hallelujah. Jesus, fear is not my future. Whatever has you bound, whatever has tried, it may not have you bound, but may try, whether it be anxiety or worry or, or, or fear or, 
or chaos. How many of you have felt just, just chaos in your life, all around, in your mind, trying to, let me tell you, anything, oh my Lord, any thought that exalts itself ab above the knowledge of Jesus Christ and he is able to take care of every situation is not of God. And we're told to take every thought captive. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wonder if you could just lift your hands and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Right where you are. Hallelujah. Let him turn it in your favor. Watch him work it for your good. Cause he's not done with what he started. He's not done until Let him turn it in your favor And watch him work it for your good Thank you, Jesus! Cause he's not done with what he started He's not done until it's good Hello! joy hello love hello strength hello hope it's a new horizon hello peace hello joy hello If you're ready for a breakthrough, just open up and just receive. Cause what he's pouring out is nothing you've ever seen. You've ever seen. Hello. Hello joy, hello love, hello strength, hello hope, it's a new horizon, hello peace, hello joy, hello You are. 
joy. Hello, love. Hello, strength. Hello, hope. It's a new horizon. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello,
Hallelujah. Right where you are, if you want to feel the newness in him, the refreshing in his spirit, just raise your hands right, right where you're at. And it's a promise. It's a new day. It's a new day. Open up your eyes. It's a new day. Jesus. The Alpha Omega. The beginning. The end. We speak your peace, Jesus. We speak your love. We speak it, Jesus. We speak the name. We speak the name, Jesus. Goodbye, fear. Goodbye, guilt. Goodbye, shame. Goodbye, pain. Goodbye, grave, it's a new horizon. <laughs> goodbye, fear, goodbye, guilt, goodbye, shame. Goodbye, pain, goodbye, grave, it's a new horizon. Mm -hmm. Jesus, there's no place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be, and here in your love, here in your love, no place I'd rather be, Jesus. There's no place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be, than here in your love, here in your love. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. More of you. And less of me, more of you, and less of me, more of you, more of you, Jesus. Is that your prayer? More of you, and less of me, more of you, and less of me, more of you. More of you, Jesus. And I want more. 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 
Come on, is there any place you would rather be than in the presence of the Almighty God? There is no greater place to be than right here in the presence of God. I would like to thank God because God's Spirit has been felt in this place. We've had guests recently tell us that as soon as they came through the door, they felt the love of God. Yes. The love of God. Thank you, Jesus. That they felt God's presence in this place. And it's not because of us individually greeting them, although they did make comments that we are very friendly and very welcoming, which is awesome. But what they really feel is the love of God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. They feel the love of God that fills this place. We had guests last week, and they, they went back to their bishop and said, I don't know what I felt there, but I want that. We need that in our church. We want to feel the love that's in that place. <laughs> and we give God all the praise because that's where it comes from. But I do thank the church for participating and allowing God's spirit to flow freely because it doesn't flow like that everywhere. They can't feel God's love every place they go because sometimes as individuals we quench that that spirit and we we set up our program we have our agenda we do things the way we want it to be done instead of letting God be leading the church and I thank God that he does in this church amen amen and sometimes it marvels me that people come in and make such remarks but yet we don't have this place totally packed out when they when they can feel the love of God and that God's spirit's here why what's hindering them amen praise God amen thank you for being here we're so glad that each and every one of you are here those that were sick we're thankful that you're not sick anymore or you're recovering and you're able to come to church. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're still praying for those that are struggling. Amen. My wife has a few announcements and we'll take up our tithe and offering. Amen. Don't let, don't let go of that spirit. I want you to receive today. Amen. God's got a message for all of us today. Amen. Amen. It's so good to see everyone in the house of the Lord this morning and the beautiful spirit that we feel if anyone is interested in joining our outreach ministry, please see Brother Omig. He's standing right over here. <laughs> if you don't know who he is, please see him. Several of them have gone out with a little portable um, uh, sound system preaching the word and they are inviting. If anyone is interested in joining in this ministry, please see him uh, a needed ministry. Amen. Our annual Christmas service is coming up on December 17th. And yes, it's a bit early to be announcing that, but we're calling for singers, narrators, sound technicians, media technicians. You may say, but I've never done the sound before. I've never done the media. I've narr never narrated before. Well, if you can read or you can memorize, you can narrate and we can teach you how to run the sound and the media. And if you would like to join us in singing, we want you to be a part of our Christmas service. So if you are interested in any of these areas, please see me. We have started our rehearsals for that service and we want as many people involved as possible. Amen. Help Wanted, we are hosting a minister's breakfast on Saturday, October 28th here at the church for local ministers to be ministered to. Ministers are constantly pouring out. Amen. They're ministering. They're doing what the Lord called them to do. And we want to serve local ministers and be a blessing to them. 
and their wives and their wives and their spouses to b- to come and serve them breakfast they will be ministered to by Dr. Daniel Surstad and be blessed but we need volunteers to come help us set up to serve the food to cook the food <laughs> And to break down, that doesn't all, that doesn't, just doesn't happen, right? It, it takes all of us working together. We will be here from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. The breakfast is from 9 to 11, I believe. So please, um, if you see the number in the bulletin text, I will help, and we will make sure to put you in an area. We also need yes, some sir. ushers to help facilitate parking and bringing the ministers and their wives into the facility also. Add that to the list. We need ushers and um, to do what Pastor has just announced. So turn to your neighbor and tell them, I need you. Turn to your other neighbor and tell them, I need you. (laughs) We need to help each other. And it's serving, amen, Uh, a serving unto the Lord. All things we do unto the Lord. We have a special service on Wednesday, October 25th with Dr. Samuel Stursad. He will be ministering here. So come, invite others to come and to be blessed. Amen. Our October birthdays that we're celebrating on the 8th, um, which was just yesterday. Yes. It's what day is today? Today's the 8th. It's today. It sneaked up on me. Amen. <laughs> Little Luke is celebrating his birthday today. He's here somewhere. I saw him earlier. Madison will be celebrating her birthday on the 13th. Yay, Maddie. Brother Anthony will be celebrating his on the 15th. Amen. Yay, Brother Anthony. Brother Miguel will be celebrating his on the 18th. Brother Miguel. Brother Jeremiah, who will be back by that time, is celebrating on the 23rd. And Sister Maggie will be (laughs) celebrating her birthday on the 26th. Yay. We're so happy to celebrate together. You know, aren't you glad to be part of the family of God? You laugh together. You sometimes we cry, but s- but oftentimes we just have a good time serving the Lord together. We're getting ready to bring our tithe and offering back. Aren't we so thankful that our usher has returned and he's here to receive the offering with a joyful heart? He receives with a joyful heart. Amen. And we give with a joyful heart. As we get ready to bring our tithe and offering, could we stand if we are able and we will pledge together to give unto the Lord. Amen. It's biblical to give unto the Lord. And the pledge is based all in scripture. So we're just saying scripture and declaring it over our lives. Amen. Let's pledge together. Upon the authority and the orders I have given... And it shall be given to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither and giver, and I bring my tithe and offerings today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates, returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts dismissed, royalties received. My greatest desire is that my whole family will be saved walking with God in perfect health and abundance, and walking in divine favor and blessings. I shall be blessed going in. I shall be blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. It is so. Same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll praise, I'll praise your name. 
Hallelujah. Come on, if he's worthy. Hallelujah. Why don't you clap your hands, lift up your voices. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy. He is worthy. How many of you really believe that he's worthy? He's worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah. Glory. No matter what you're going through today, he is worthy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We shall praise him. We shall thank him for all things. Amen. 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 I want to talk today for just a few moments about a life worth living. A life worth living. Lord, I ask that you help me today. Lord, I know this message is already anointed. It's your word. Lord, I pray that we get a deeper revelation and understanding of this scripture. This is a popular scripture. This is one that many of us can memorize and many of us can quote. Hallelujah. But God, I want to understand it. I don't want to just quote it. I don't want to just say it. I don't want to just have a, a, a surface understanding of this scripture. But I really want to dig deep today, and I really want to totally understand, and I want to apply it to my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me read just a few verses of scripture before you're seated. I'm going to read the King James Version, Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 1 through 7, my son or daughter, forget not my law. We could just stop there and just really go into that, but let's read this before we dig deep. But we need to not forget God's law, but let thine heart keep, keep all my commandments. Don't forget it and keep it. For the length of days and a long life and peace shall be or shall they add unto you thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about your neck, around your neck. Write them upon the table of your heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, in all of your ways, hallelujah, acknowledge him. And then he shall, he will direct your path. 
Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Lord, once again, bless this word tonight. Open up their understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Now let me read the Amplified Version to help us dig a little deeper. And it says basically the same thing in the first verse here. Don't forget, forget not my commandments. And it says here that you need to not forget my law and put it in your heart and do them. But the second verse here, for the length of days and years of your life will be worth living. Let life be worth living. And it says that your prosperity and the wholeness of life and the wholeness of life's blessing will be upon you. I want to live a life that is worth living. I want the wholeness of God's blessings on my life. If I don't forget His law and I keep His commandments, then there's going to be a wholeness of blessings coming my way. And it's going to be a life that's worth living. Prosperity in my health. Prosperity, not only in our, our, our living and our material life, but the, the prosperity of good health and good emotions and, and, and living a blessing of a life. Do not let mercy and kindness and truth leave you. Instead, let these qualities define you. Let them define you. I need God's mercy. I need His kindness. I need His truth to lead me and direct me through my life. I need that working in my life. I cannot depend on my own way. I need Him to define who I am. And then it goes on further and says, Bind them securely around your neck. Not loosely. Don't let it slip away. Put it around there. Make sure that you have it. And write, write them on the tablet of your heart. And then it goes on and says, So find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust and rely confidentially in the Lord with all your heart. Be confident in God in all things. I trust God so much that I am confident that He is going to do a great work and He is going to bless me. He's going to bless you. He's going to bless my family. I'm confident when I trust Him and keep His word that it's going to happen. I'm confident in that. Amen. And then let me go just a little further. And do not rely on your own insight or your own understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize Him. And He will make your path straight. And He will make them smooth. He will remove obstacles that block your way from your blessing. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Be obedient to his word. Hallelujah. And turn entirely away from evil. And here's what I like. Verse 8. If you do these things, it will be health to your body. Your marrow, your nerves, your tissues, your muscles, your all every inner part of your body, it will be a refreshment. It will be a physical well-being, and it will do your bones good. Do you know that we can increase our health by doing what God says and obeying Him and trusting Him in everything? I know it gets quiet when we have to think we have to trust God for everything. Because that means I can't have my way. I can't make my own decisions. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your crops, your income. 
Then your barns will be abundantly filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not reject or take lightly the discipline of the Lord. Learn from your mistakes and the testings that come from his correction through discipline. Do not despise or rebuke. For those whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Somebody say amen. So we've got to trust God in everything. Everybody say everything. I want, to, I want you to write down, if you're a note taker, if you want to really get the key notes of the message of the hour, the four things that I want you to take away more than anything today is, number one, we have to acknowledge Him. Number two, we have to trust Him. Number three, we have to not depend on ourselves. Number four, don't depend on others. Don't depend on humans. Depend on God. So let's break this down. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. We cannot see the future without God's wisdom. We cannot see the present without his understanding. We can't see the past, present, or future without God's wisdom. At best, we expect to experience beyond the current limit of the horizon. But here's what we need to understand. God wants us to have the highest knowledge and the deepest commitment to his ways. We will have hills to climb and we'll, we'll have some bumpy roads to traverse. But how will we fare in this journey? Someone said, and I liked it, I wrote it down, I would rather burn out than to rust away. I would rather burn out than rust away. We're all so worried about doing too much and burning out, but I would rather burn out than to rust away by doing nothing because I'm trying to conserve my energy. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. He will direct your path. Hallelujah. Do we have any assurance that we can safely and successfully make it to our destination? How many of you, what's your destination? I want to make it to heaven. I want to meet Jesus. I want to be with him someday. That's my ultimate priority in life. And it should be yours. Nothing really else should really matter because everything else is going to pass away. Our, tuck, our text here, the scripture today says that we can make it and we can do it victoriously and we can allow God, we can trust God to lead us and to guide us into understanding of his ways. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. We see this watchword. And it, it's a battle cry for a testing time. It's, it's comfort. It's, it's, it's a, a, a time to get strength. Uh, and it's a time to take his word and, and, and really apply it to our life. Not just quote it. Not just memorize it. Not just read it. But meditate upon it and really let it strengthen us. We understand that. This word direct is kind of a substitute for a road map. Even through our eyes, we cannot discern the turns and the stops and the difficulties of life, the, the pleasures that are ahead. Living a life that is worth living, going on the journey with the road map, but not really understanding all the twists and turns and the, uh, you know, there's a lot of heels and bumps, there's a lot of, Curves. There's a lot of things going on in this journey. But when we have the master of the plan, when we have the man with all knowledge and all wisdom, when we learn to trust him, he will direct our path. He will lead us. He will take us where we need to go. Let's look at this. God can guide us in our everyday living. 
we, if we will allow God, He will direct our everyday living, every decision. We can give it to God and trust God. We ought to trust God with everyday living. It's not just when something bad goes on in our life. In every decision, turn to your neighbor and say, in every decision. I, I, I've been a fool. I have been unwise. There's some, sometimes I take my own, my own decisions without seeking God. Do it way too often. In every decision, in every action, in every, listen, in every development of our lives. God will direct our path if we will allow him to. It's like this. This this is the likeness that I want to illustrate. It's kind of like this. The likeness of a road builder and a maintenance chief suggests the word direct. In other words, you got to have somebody who is building the road, somebody is maintaining the road so that you can use the road to get where you're going. This can assure us that when we travel to a destination that the road that is built and maintained will help us get there. That's what God is saying. He said, I will build the road. I will maintain the road so that you can get to the travel destination. Hallelujah. I will be there preparing the way. In the Hebrew language, there are certain words that they use for road or path. It includes words like highway, a way, a narrow path, a broad path. A trodden path, a customary or usual path or road where people continuously travel. And so in this verse of Scripture, God is telling us that this should be the common road that we take, the one that the builder is maintaining for us, the one that he has chosen our way. We need to learn to trust it and follow it and give it all to God. God relates to us a road builder and a maintenance chief in the customary of today's travels in our lives. He he, he wants to cut the road straight and make it useful for us. Here's what he meant by the promise, he shall direct our paths. We can get where we ought to because God is available to prepare the way that we ought to go. That's what he's saying. I'm here. I am available. I will help you if you acknowledge me, if you trust me, if you don't do it your own way. Laying a little foundation here. He is active in our affairs if we allow Him to be. God can't be active in our lives if we don't really trust Him. We can say we trust Him. We can quote the Scripture. But do we really let God build the road and maintain the road and be available for us? Do we allow Him to do that? Or do we just call on Him when we have a major problem? We may not see the road builder or the maintenance chief doing every mile every day, but we do understand that they have been at work and it's there and he's already prepared the way. Now, this analogy doesn't really, really, really tell the deep story. We need to dive just a little bit deeper into this. Faith does not come in a bushel basket. It comes one step at a time. When we trust God, we got to trust God one step at a time. We can't take three or four on our own and then look for God for one. We need to take every step, every step we take, everything that we do, everything. God, you are the one that I need. My faith is going to take a step, and every step is going to be by faith. It comes one step at a time. Watch this. Decide. uh, Here, I'm going to challenge you. Decide to trust him for one little thing today. 
And before you know it, you'll find out that you're going to trust him and he's trustworthy and you will commit your whole life to him. Once you realize that you can trust him, he's worthy of our trust. He's going to take care of us if we would one day, every day, just say, I'm going to trust God today. Someone said it this way, pray and let God worry. Pray and let God worry. We don't need to. Just give it to God. God goes with us. When God takes out the trash and he goes and he throws it in the dumpster, stop doing the dumpster diving and digging out what he threw away. Man, God takes things out of our life, and then we go right back to the, let's, let's see what it was that God threw out. I don't, I, I, I don't want to get rid of that. Uh, let, let me pull that back out. God, you have control. But wait a minute, I want to go see what it was you threw away. Because I don't know, I don't know if that was a good decision. I, I don't know about that one, God. The God who can guide us, in fact, becomes very personally involved in every inch of our journey. If we allow him to be involved, he will really be involved. But the problem is we don't really want him to be involved because then I'm going to have to let him throw some stuff out that I didn't want to be thrown out. <laughs> oh, God. Woo, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't know if you feel it, but I feel the Holy Ghost. God's only talking to me. He promises in Psalms 32 and 8. He promises, I will instruct you. I will instruct thee and teach thee, teach you the way which thou shalt go, that I want you to go. If you, hallelujah, I promise, I will teach you. I will tell you what you need to do. I will guide thee with mine eyes. Folks, take that word. God will teach you if you really want to know, if you really want to know what to do. Trust him with all your heart. Acknowledge him in all your ways. The psalmist also said in 48, 14, he said it this way, for this God is our God forever and ever. Realize this God is a God that's going to be our God forever. You can't exchange Him. He's all-knowing. He's got the plan. He knows the way. He's the road master. He knows where you need to go. See, we don't really look at it that way. God is the only God. He will guide us even until our death. When it's Time to go. He will guide us there. The psalmist said in 58, 11, the Lord shall guide thee continuously or continually. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come in John 16 and 13, he will guide you into all truth. See, when we trust God with our whole heart, we take truth and we apply it to our life because I can trust God. God is, God, my, listen, it's all about God, but God is worried about me and my prosperity and my well-being. And when I can trust God with all my heart, I'm going to have a blessed life. It's going to be a life that's worth living. Some of us say, well, you know, it's a rough life. Listen, it don't have to be rough if you learn to trust God. My, I, I feel the Holy Ghost. I can't help it. I, I, I can just feel it. I can feel it all over this place. God is the God of love, and God is trying to give you a road map. And, and there's, there's many of us that we don't want God to throw some trash out. We don't want to trust God in everything. We want some things for our own. We want to make some of our own decisions. And, and then we wonder why we struggle and why we don't have the blessed life. God can guide us. We, we know he can. But there's three conditions that will determine his guidance. See, God can do whatever God wants to do, but God has given us the ability that we make our own decisions. 
So he's got three conditions that, that if we really want to allow God to lead us, he's not going to make us. You're going to have to choose. So here's one of the things you have to do. You have to first acknowledge him. Have you ever went by somewhere, you, you've been at a family reunion or, or, or you've been somewhere and, and, and you walk by somebody and you're trying to get their attention and they don't acknowledge you? I know none of you have had that experience. It might even, listen, it might even happen in your own home. Trying to get somebody's attention and they don't acknowledge you. Hello. God tries to get our attention and sometimes we just, we don't acknowledge him. Hello, hello, I'm trying to help you. Yeah. Who is that? I don't know. I have no time for him. He's going to tell me something I don't want to hear. It's true. We are preoccupied. We are so preoccupied with what we're doing that we miss his guidance. We are preoccupied with other things in our life that we can't even acknowledge him. We don't even, listen, we feel that he's, he's even tapping on my shoulder, but I, I just ignore him. I'm the only one I know. God's guidance, we must pay attention. We must be sensitive to what God is trying to do. If we don't acknowledge Him in all of our ways, He can't lead us and direct us. Number two. Well, before we get to number two, let's go. What areas do we need to acknowledge Him? In everything? In all of our ways? In the daytime? In the nighttime? We need to acknowledge him at work and at play. We need to acknowledge him when we're resting, and we need to acknowledge him when we're worshiping. We need to, listen, we need to acknowledge him in our relationships. Oh, that, let that one sink in for a minute. And when we are alone, we need to acknowledge him. Don't get alone and then forget about God. It's when the enemy comes in. Number two, if you're taking notes, trust him. If you trust mankind or humans, you will be let down. Can I, can I give you an example? Some of you won't understand, but I got to give some examples. People will let us down. Let me just take... Just, just let me use this as an example. Some of you won't understand, but the Miami Hurricanes. They pay millions of dollars to coaches. High-paid, well-qualified, successful coaches. Now they pay the players. Players still make mistakes. Players still fumble the ball. Players still throw in interceptions. Referees get paid a lot of money to do the game. They miss a lot of calls. Not trying to blame it. We all have it. We all have mistakes. I'm just trying to give you an illustration that we can understand. Help me understand how... All these millions of dollars going to a coaching staff can't figure out that you won the game. All you got to do is hike the ball and kneel down. Why are you running the ball to fumble it? Don't put your trust in humans. It's not going to make sense. They've done this all their life, and you still haven't figured out when you've won the game. All you got to do is take a knee. 26 seconds left in the game and you try to run the ball and fumble the ball and then you want to blame the refs. He was down. Well, the refs missed it. The player missed it because he shouldn't have fumbled in the first place and the coach missed it because he shouldn't even hike the ball to and hand it off to somebody. Just kneel. Don't trust man. 
Don't trust politicians. I don't, I don't even have time to go through all of this, that, that stuff. But what I'm saying is we can't, listen, I can't even trust my brother Travis. We can't trust the players. We can't trust the referees. I can't even trust my coaching. The only thing that I can trust is God. Because he's the all-knowing God. Have to acknowledge him in everything. Now that I got that off my chest, I feel better. I had to some way, somehow get that out there. Because they let us down, man. You would think, well, let me go on. You would think all this, you would, anyway. But I don't blame them because I do the same stupid stuff or unwise stuff. I have made some of the most unwise, foolish decisions. What was I thinking? So you got to forgive. But what I'm saying is we can't trust anything. You can't trust your doctors. You can't trust doctors. You can't trust medicine. Are they needful sometimes? Yes. But, but, but we need God. The only person that we can really rely on and trust is God and God alone. Will the doctors get it right sometimes? Yes. Will the medicine work sometimes? Yes. Will the coaches get it right sometimes? Yes. Will the referees get it right sometimes? Yes. Will the players get it right sometimes? Yes. In every area of every life, they're going to get it right sometimes, but we can only really trust one all-knowing God who is above all and is in control of all things, and he has all the power and all the knowledge and all the understanding. So all I learned was humans don't know everything. And humans are going to make mistakes. Say amen. It doesn't matter how much money they get. Move on, pastor. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. We trust him in the hours of special need. When there is no one else that we can trust, then we'll trust God. Or we trust him when a unique assignment comes up and we don't feel secure with our own decision. Then we'll ask for God to help us. But how about our trust level when we need him for things we don't even know we need him for? How about every little decision? How about every time we, we decide on anything? How about God, I need you to lead me. In ordinary experiences of life, I need God to guide me. I need God to lead me. I need to trust him. I need to trust his word. What does his word say? You see, we, we want God to, to, to help us when we make mistakes, but we don't want to listen to what his word says. God, I'm, not, I'm going to ignore your word, and then I'm going to pray when I need you. And he might, or he might not. It's not that he can't, but he doesn't always do it. Trusting God is like loving God. We must totally, totally give ourselves to him. We must desire to please him totally every day and every experience. You know, Adam and Eve, they sinned and, and, and things came into the world and, and then they knew they were naked. And so, and so Adam went to Eve and says, here, put this on. Either take it or leave it. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory to you. We've got to get a chuckle once in a while. I know they're corny sometimes, but, but you know, lightens it up a little bit. Think about two professing Christians, apostolics, both who affirm their faith in Jesus Christ. One is stable and trust God and, and, and lean on God through everything. 
and, and, and you and, and they almost look at me look, they, they, they make it look easy to live for God because why because they have trusted God with everything and they seem to not really ever get really you know down or or, 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 or they never seem to be frantic about anything they never panic about anything but then you take another one who professes to be a Christian and when something comes along they panic and they they, they totally forget about God and what God said What's the difference? One had faith in God through everything. The other one was double-minded. And they did not acknowledge God in everything. The other thing that we need to look at, don't depend on yourself. Don't depend on ourselves. When, when, when somebody needed to build a boat in the Old Testament, they went to a town and they said, who do we see to, to build a boat? And they said, we know a guy. We know a guy. Say amen. These first two conditions may be labeled as positive conditions, but there's a third label that is negative. Lean not to your own understanding. Why? Listen, it says it this way in the, the, the Revised Standard Version. It says, do not rely on your own insight. Do not trust yourself. We've got to stop trusting ourselves and trusting other people. We need to totally, totally trust God in everything. I don't know how to say this, but we really need to trust God in everything. We need to slow down. We need to acknowledge Him. God, I acknowledge you, God. I need direction, God. I need you to help me, God. I don't want to do it my way. I want to do it the way that is best, the way that your word says to do things. I don't want to come back and ask for help after I've already made a mistake. After I didn't acknowledge you, after I didn't trust you, now I'm going to come back to you and say, I trust you. Lord, help me. See, God wants us to get it right. He wants you to acknowledge him in everything. He wants you to trust him in everything. Then he can direct your path. Then you can live a prosperous life that's worth living. Are you living the life that is worth living right now? Or do you have struggles? Do you have fear? Do you have doubts? Do you have, listen, lack of prosperity? Whether it be in your health or in your finances or in your emotions or, or your spirit. Listen, we need to learn to acknowledge God in everything. I, I know we say amen, but I don't think we really understand. When we acknowledge him in everything, every decision, we go to God. What do you say about this, God? What does your word tell me to do in this? Listen, I really, really think that we totally sometimes misunderstand. We say we know the scripture. We say amen to things, but we don't really acknowledge God. We don't really trust him. We don't really ask him, what way should I go? What should I do? We only go to him when we mess things up, and then now we need God to fix it. When we should have went to him in the first place. And we're not condemning anybody because we all, we all have come short of the glory of God and doing what God says. This lesson is only to encourage us. We need to acknowledge him in everything. Stop letting him walk past. You need to acknowledge him in everything, not just the big things, not everything. That's where it gets quiet. Because when he takes out the trash, I want to go follow and see what it was he threw away because I may not want us to be thrown away. And that's why a lot of times we don't acknowledge him in everything because we already know the answer. My God, I felt the Holy Ghost. I don't know if you felt the Holy Ghost, but I felt the Holy Ghost. We don't want to acknowledge God in everything because we want to make our own decisions. It's like going to the dad, and you already know what dad's going to say. Dad, can I go to the party? I know dad's not. Nope. So you know what? I'm not going to acknowledge dad. I'm going to go to mom. Mom, they're, really, they're having this party. I, I really need, it's really, really, really important. 
Yeah, I know it's quiet. We know how that works, don't we? We don't go to people because we already know the answer. We don't go to God and ask God for his approval because we already know the answer. But then when we get ourselves in a mess, then we come running to God. God, you got to help me. That's a good thing at least, right? At least you still have faith in God. God can fix whatever you messed up because you didn't want to acknowledge him. You didn't want to trust him. You didn't want to trust his word. Some of this stuff hasn't even happened yet, but it's going to be happening because some of you are not going to want to acknowledge God. Because we, we are human, and we like doing things our own way. My Lord, can I just have another little rant? My Lord, you got all this millions of dollars paying for all this stuff. Go buy somebody who can at least manage a clock. If you're too busy worrying about everything, else, get just one person, man. Pay me a million dollars. I'll watch the clock and tell you that you don't need to do anything. And just take a knee. Anyway, God promised to Abraham and Sarah. You see, this is so common. Abraham and Sarah, they thought they were helping God. God made a promise. They were going to have a child. They're going to have a son. And it may not have made sense in the human nature and the human way of thinking. The doctor said it's impossible. Why do we always listen to doctors? They're not all knowing. Oh, I know I'm going to get in trouble with a lot of people. I'm sorry. I, it's not, nothing against doctors. I just... Why do we trust them more than we trust God? That's all I'm saying. Abraham and Sarah, it's impossible, so God needs our help. I know what God needs. We need to, to go ahead and get Hagar, and you sleep with Hagar, and you marry Hagar, and, and God means that you're going to have a child with her, and, and that's what God was saying. How many times do we do that in our life? That, that we try to help God. Well, God, I don't see how it's going to work that way, God. So, so let me just help you, God. And sh let me tell you how it's going to. I see how it can work. Every day we do it, don't we? Can, can, I, can I challenge you? Acknowledge God in everything, in all your ways. Trust him with all your heart. Stop depending on your own self. Stop depending on others because they're not all-knowing. They don't know everything. They don't even agree on everything. So if they're all right, how can they be all right and they're all right when they don't agree? Everybody's got an opinion. Who's right? The Word of God. Folks, it is so simple, it, it boggles our mind. Why can't we just trust God who created all things, who knows all things? He knows how he created you. He knows what you need. He knows how he, listen, he knows how to lead you. He knows what benefits you. He knows everything. Hallelujah. Why do we go to someone else when God knows everything? My God, I feel the Holy Ghost, and I can't help it if I hurt somebody's feelings. God is the all-knowing God. He created everything. He spoke it into existence. He knows what's good for you. He knows what's bad for you. Why do you want to not acknowledge Him and trust Him with your life? My God, I feel the Holy Ghost so strong. Somebody needs to receive it. Maybe it's not somebody in here. You guys got it all together, but there's somebody watching that needs to hear this. Stop depending on yourself and stop depending on others. 
God promised Abraham and Sarah a child, but no child was born. So many years after they, they, they had this dilemma, they helped God out. And then you know what happened? Hagar uh, slept with Abraham. They had a union, and Ishmael was born. And this, listen, do you know that what's going on today, today, today is because they didn't trust God, and they made up their own decision, and they did their things their way, and because of Ishmael and, and the promised child, hallelujah, of Isaac. Listen, we understand. I mean, not, yeah, Isaac. Listen, do we understand that that one time where they did not recognize God, acknowledge God, and trust God, they made a mistake that we're suffering today as one, one, one nation is bombing another nation because of this. Half brothers, jealousy, hostile, and, and they still hate each other. And then we have whoever's in charge of the world. Whoever's in charge telling our president to give $6 billion to the people that want to bomb Israel, and they get, they get $6 billion, and what do you know? They're bombing Israel. I'm sorry. I, it's not about politics. It's about we don't trust God. It's about these men don't know what they're doing. And listen, People make mistakes whether they're evil or they're not evil. There's people that are, are influenced by evil and darkness and, and pride and greed and, and, and fame and all that and power and they're drunk on it and, and it's evil. But there's also people who make bad decisions that, that are not necessarily evil. They just don't know everything. And we're not mad at them. We're just trying to get the point across. We need to acknowledge God in everything and trust God in everything and stop depending on other people, stop depending on schools and, and politics and, 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 and all these other people for what, what does God say? I don't care what they say. I don't know. God's, listen, God knows. Oh, I might seem, I, I, I'm not angry. I'm frustrated. That myself, myself, I don't acknowledge God in everything. I try to make my own decisions, as I know we all do. But we're only here to help. We're not here to beat you up. Sounds like it, but I'm not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Acknowledge him, trust him, depend not on yourself, depend not on mankind. We all make unwise decisions. But watch this. We can only defeat ourselves. Everybody pay attention to this last part. We can only defeat ourselves when we don't trust God. We only defeat ourselves and God's purpose when we don't lean on God. When we lean on our own understanding, we only defeat ourselves and we defeat God's purpose. How long will you carry the load? How long will you carry the possessions on your head that are not even yours? They all belong to God. Let's stand. God wants to give us his guidance. He knows our need better than we do. He knows our failure without his guidance is going to lead to destruction. Listen, people can question your faith, but they can't question your belief. But he likewise knows our capacity to follow his instruction, and his direction. He has a unique plan for each one of us. He has a purpose for each and every one of us. If we would just slow down Forget not his law. Keep his law. Acknowledge him in everything. 
then what? Then He will guide us. He will direct us. He will, he will bless us. We will have prosperity. We will have a life that is worth living. If your life is not worth living, then you have missed the whole point. We need to give it all to God. Let God have control. Your life has a purpose. Getting high, getting drunk, having fun, making a lot of money, doing craziness is not God's purpose for your life. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I wonder if anybody will respond to the Holy Ghost. Why don't you come to these altars and say, Lord, I, I have been, a, I, listen, I have been unwise. I have tried to make my own decisions. I have tried to make my own path. I haven't gone down the customary path that God wants me to go down. I, I haven't been following His path, His highway, His byway. I have not been going down the, 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 the road that He wants me to go. I, I've made it wide and, listen, I've made it wide and broad. Jesus is making it straight and narrow. He, he's, he's trying to make it useful for you. He's trying to get you to a place, a, a purpose that he has for you. He's trying to get you to a destination, and you are messing it up. You're not a bad person. You're not an evil person. You're just, you're just not wise. And, and we understand it because we all have done it and we'll probably still do it again even after getting revelation even after studying and meditating upon this scripture and and di digging deep into it and, and trying to get a better understanding i will stay i will still sometimes not acknowledge god and trust god and make unwise decisions and i'll have to come back and say lord forgive me help me get me back on the road Get me straight again, Lord. I need the straight and narrow way. Lord, I can't put my faith or trust in anybody but you. I don't need a doctor. I need God. I don't need a government. I need a God who cares, who knows. <laughs> Lord, you are my strength. Lord, I trust you with all my heart. Lord, I don't want to lean on to my understanding. Lord, please help me not lean to my own understanding anymore. Or let me at least do it fewer times in my life. Let me get revelation to totally trust you with all my heart so that you can direct my path, God that I can live a life that is worth living. Anybody want to live a life that is worth living? The Holy Ghost is here. God's love is here. God's Word is here. God's mercy is here. He says, put that around your neck. Write it upon your heart. God is faithful. Can you become faithful to Him? Can you give reverence to Him? Can you acknowledge Him and obey Him and His Word? Because He wants to lead you down the right path. I feel the Holy Ghost. I hope you're coming. Come on, ma'am. Come on, sir. Just a couple more times. I'm saying come. 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 God's calling. Come, sir. Come, ma'am. Come. Don't, don't miss out. Today is the day for salvation. Today is the day to trust God, to get your answer. I'm going to put the mic down. Would you pray at home watching? Lift up your hands. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God.
Hallelujah. We all have a little bit of Abraham and Sarah. We all have a little bit of Abraham and Sarah. We all think we are helping God. Somehow we think we've got to help God. God, I know you, I know what you said, and I know what your word said, but but God, this is how. And I, you know, I gotta help you keep your promise. So this is how it's gotta be done. We have that in our lives, and we've gotta stop. We've gotta, we've gotta cut back. We've really got to learn to not forget Him and His law. Keep His commandments. It's for your benefit. It's for His purpose in your life. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be wealthy and healthy and he wants you to prosper in every area of your life he wants you to prosper in your relationships he wants you to prosper on your job he wants you to prosper in whatever he's called you to do but when we step in and we try to help him because it's not the way that we want it to be done or how we can reason it out in our mind it's all about rational thinking right it's about we we we, we can't figure out how God is going to do it. Through the test of time, they've all went through it. Moses, people complaining to Moses. Moses know what God said. Go this way, and everybody's complaining. Well, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. This is the way that you get there. No, this is the way God said to go. God has a purpose. He's going to show His glory. When you acknowledge Him and trust Him and you follow Him, He can open up the Red Sea. You can cross over to the other side. It doesn't make sense. How a big, strong city wall of Jericho is going to fall just by marching around and making some noise. But when you trust God, it's not always going to make sense to our karma, our, our, our carnal thinking, our carnal minds, the way that we think. If His God, listen, if God's Word says it, that's what we believe. Man, it's a hard one. It's hard in the world that we live in. It's hard to get people to trust God in everything. We we've so we we have we're so we have so much convenience and so many programmed ways of doing things that we possibly can't not do what the world says. We got to do it God's way. People are going to call me a fanatic. They're going to call me crazy. I'm going to call you crazy if you believe the Word of God. I hope this is not falling on deaf ears. And the devil tries to come and discourage us. He tries to come and snatch that Word out. As soon as we leave today, We're going to forget about it. We're going to go back to doing our own thing. And I'm not going to make it personalized. I'm not going to customize and tell you everything that you need to do. You've got to read the Word. You've got to pray over it. You've got to acknowledge Him. You've got to trust Him. Let the Word speak to you. Let revelation come. 
I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to take his word for it. It's his word. It's not my word. You say, I don't even know what you're talking about, preacher. I'm talking about whatever it is that you struggle doing what God says. Whatever area of life that is in. And the church usually says, Hallelujah. A life worth living. I want to live a life worth living. I want to live a life worth living. And the only way that's going to happen is if I acknowledge Him and trust Him in everything. I'm going to let Him direct my path. And it doesn't have to make sense to me. I don't have to understand the signs. I just need to follow the signs. Amen. God bless you. We love you. If you need to keep praying, keep praying. Amen. Hug one another. Greet one another. Hallelujah. If you don't understand what I'm saying, pray about it. Hallelujah. Watch it again. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. One moment, folks. Sister Carrie uh, has a quick announcement. Hello, family. Um, I just want you all to know that I've been diagnosed with cancer in my body and that I have an appointment scheduled for the 24th for surgery.